facing Brandon Marsh. First ball oh. swinging. Fair ball inside the bag. Bounces off the sidewall. Rio Muto will score. Marsh into second. He's in there with a double. Another run is in. Welcome back to another Valley Sports Plug Arizona Diamondbacks playoff recap for Game 2 of the National League Championship Series. I'm Chris Patrick, and joining me are Michael Benjamin and VSP Tallman, here to break it all down for you. So let's go ahead and get right into it. The Arizona Diamondbacks back in action Tuesday night, looking to bounce back after a tough Game 1 loss, and well... Unfortunately, they didn't bounce in the right direction, getting shut out for the first time ever in the postseason as a franchise. Painful as it is, we'll take a quick look at the scoring breakdown in this one. Are you ready? I'll try and make this quick for everyone. Trey Turner solo home run in the first. Kyle Schwarber solo home run in the third. Kyle Schwarber solo home run again in the sixth. Stott, Turner, Real Muto all score on a pair of doubles in the sixth. If you're keeping track at home, that makes the score 6-0 to zero going into the seventh inning. And did the bleeding stop there? Of course not. In the seventh, Kyle Schwarber and Bryce Harper came home off an Alec Bohm double. Bohm came home himself shortly thereafter off a JT Real Muto single. And to put the cherry on top, Bryson Stott scored the final run of the game off a deep Nick Castellanos sacrifice fly. And when the dust settled, the final score in this one was 10-0 Phillies. And the Fightin' Phils now hold a 2-0 lead over our Arizona Diamondbacks. This game was without a doubt a gut punch for Diamondbacks fans. It's one thing to lose this game too, but to get shut out and lose by double digits? Just not a situation you want to find yourself in heading home for Game 3. As for this Game 2, we're going to break down three keys of this game as we have for every recap this postseason. So let's pass it over to Michael Benjamin for his first key of this game. Lots of places you can start with from this shellacking, but we're going to start key number one with the bottom of the sixth. Ron Darling and Jeff Francoeur, they jinxed us, man. I just had that feeling that something bad was going to happen after they stepped into the mind of Merrill. If I'm Merrill Kelly, the only thought I have is not giving up another run. I have to keep this intact for my team to have a chance. I mean, literally, like two pitches later, Schwarber cranks his second home run of the game. At least Kelly got to two outs, but Torrey was slow getting the bullpen ready. And then Mantiply lost the matchup with Stott after surrendering a single, and that was it. I mean, Real Muto had the upper hand taking that at-bat and forcing Joe to pitch in the zone on a 3-2 to two count. Guys, I know we're going to talk about it coming up, but man, we just didn't have any juice tonight. And I don't know, fellas, I know I'm the eternal optimist, but I'm getting a little bit of vibes from the NLDS game one, but we're on the wrong end, right? The Dodgers never recovered. Taking a spanking like that can creep on you subconsciously. But the beautiful thing is we get to see how they respond at home this time. So that's key number one. Tallman. What do you got for number two? All right, fellas. I was very afraid to see a game like tonight, a crushing loss. And at least in game one, we scrapped back a little bit, right? But how is this team going to respond to just a 10-0 beatdown in Philadelphia? But my second not-so-key to the game, I'm going the same as last night. Where are these guys at? Where's our impact players at? Where's our big bats in that lineup at? Carroll, 0 for 3. Pham, 0 for 4. Walker, 1 for 4. He got a single late in the game. Guriel, 0 for 4. Cattell, he was the only dude that figured it out tonight. He went 2 for 4 with a single and a double. But that duo punch with Zach Wheeler and Aaron Nola just fooled every D-backs hitter. I mean, even tonight, there's a couple guys tonight that got caught looking on strike three against Nola. But this looks like a different team, guys. We're not playing our brand of baseball. We're not playing that scrappy style of baseball. You know, where, where are the answer backs at? Where is the chaos? There's no chaos right now to even embrace. How do we even follow our team motto right now? I mean, this team, guys, we belong on the side of a melt carton because we are lost, absolutely lost. But we get to come home. Come on home, baby. We need this team to wake up. We need to embrace that home field advantage. We need some crazy ass fans in the stands, just like the D-backs had to play against in Philadelphia. We got to give them a taste of their own medicine. We need this team to come back, pull up them bootstraps, 
get those bats going, capitalize on runners in scoring position, and score some damn runs. Because we already know Brandon Fott's coming out in game three. Look at what this Phillies lineup did to our top two pitchers. They're going to score some runs against Brandon Fott on Thursday in game three. We better have some run support in game three, or you can kiss any chance to win this series goodbye. It's going to look like 2007 again when we got swept in the NLCS against the Rockies. That's all I got to say. Diamondbacks just aren't looking like themselves lately. And so the third key in this one is the low energy. In my opinion, they already looked checked out once they went down 2-0 in the third. In the third, guys. And then you pile on everything that happened in the sixth. And then in the seventh, what the hell happened with Ryan Nelson and Evan Longoria on that pop fly? They're all looking at each other like they just got caught with their pants down. Longo looked disappointed. Nelson looked confused. I mean, the fact of the matter is the pitcher is not supposed to be the one fielding that ball. And Evan Longoria is the veteran, right? He's supposed to be the one to step up, call off the pitcher, say, yo, I got this, and reel that in. But let's not act like that was the reason we lost this game. There were some other goofy things that went on during this game. Lourdes Goriel appearing to think that there were already two outs in the inning, not getting the ball back in quicker. We've been talking about how he has a bit of a noodle arm and isn't really able to throw it back in very well to begin with. So maybe he knew there weren't two outs. Just real head scratcher on that one. And last to mention, Corbin Carroll hasn't stolen any bases or really even attempt to in the last two games. What is prompting that decision? Is it coming from management and Tori Lovello, or is this Corbin Carroll being in his head? Either way, I hope that the Diamondbacks can take the off day on Wednesday to get their head right and come out strong Thursday afternoon to steal game three and get back on track. And speaking of game three, like I mentioned, that will be played on Thursday, October 19th, back home at Chase Field in Phoenix. First pitch is slated for 2.07 p.m. Arizona time, and the rookie Brandon Fott will get the start for the Diamondbacks. We're going to keep bringing you a recap of every single Diamondbacks game through the remainder of the postseason, so make sure you subscribe right here on YouTube and set those notifications so you can stay up to date with all of the Valley Sports and Arizona Diamondbacks action. For Michael Benjamin and VSP Tallman, I'm Chris Patrick, and we'll see you next time. Peace.